Tonight, a tropical cyclone is forming near Vanuatu. And the cyclone near the Brazilian coast right now, delivering strong tropical storm force winds. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for May 18th. So we have a tropical depression in the South Pacific and what was named earlier by Marina Yakika off the coast of southern Brazil. So far though, none of them, neither of them have been recognized as a tropical storm and so far we're still at 25 for the year. Well, in the Atlantic, this is the problem with tropical weather bulletins, at least at my end for the time being, because we only look at the northern hemisphere basins on this section. 14 days until hurricane season, but still nothing brewing, despite what others might say around the media tubes and wires. There is nothing yet occurring. Day 4 of hurricane season in the eastern Pacific, no areas of interest active here either. So a disappointing start, some might say, to the eastern Pacific hurricane season, which to be fair has started early in recent years. In the western Pacific, nothing here either. Not just yet, although uh, some models are latching on to possible development near Taiwan uh, and possibly the Philippines, the western coast, uh, next or late this week into next week. And in the Indian Ocean, things are quiet again. Uh, the rumblings of a potential cyclone near Myanmar have been quashed and things are now back to relative normal, although there will be monsoonal developments in the Bay of Bengal this week. Well then, let's take a look at what's important. This is a tropical depression that has formed in the South Pacific, obviously very late in the season. 35 mile per hour winds, a pressure of 1,005 millibars, and it's located between Vanuatu and Fiji. Um, and it's going to turn, well, move towards the coast of Vanuatu, the islands, the central parts of the country uh, over the next few days and probably become a mid-range tropical storm moving pretty close to Port Villa, the capital, and then down towards the southwest where it will lose momentum and lose pace and uh, get uh, consumed. And this is extra tropical cyclone Yakikan still at the moment with 50 mile per hour winds and a pressure of 991 millibars. You can see the green area there, tropical storm force winds are on land, moving north at 23 miles per hour. It will pass fairly close to Porto Alegre today, uh, overnight tonight into the morning hours, and then it will sweep off the coast, possibly get a bit stronger, and then down towards the southeast. We're giving it a 30% chance of becoming subtropical or tropical as it does this, and eventually by the end of the week it will end up towards Tristan da Cunha. Uh, there is the uh, satellite imagery of the storm right now from GOES-16 which is uh, great to show you uh, and you can see there it's trying to get itself together it's a decent spiral uh, but still at the moment uh, no forthcoming signs of uh, it becoming a nameable storm by most international standards but Marina once again jumping the gun and naming it pronunciation is probably all wrong too by the way well, let's take a look at worldwide satellite imagery. This is the Atlantic Ocean and you can see not much going on. A little bit of uh, tropical thunderstorms down there in the deep tropics uh, in the southern Caribbean near the, near the coast of Panama. Uh, that could even become uh, the system that uh, models have been suggesting in the longer range, that potential cyclone. This is the Eastern Pacific and you can see still it's fairly quiet. You've got one or two little areas there blowing up thunderstorms, but they're all surrounded by dry air. If you look carefully, you'll see the coast of Mexico underneath the United States outlines there. A lot of thunderstorms over land right now. And this is the Western Pacific. And you can see the frontal systems dominating again and those uh, a little bit of convection off the western coast of the Philippines that might be a source of development later on down the line that's something to watch for signs uh, in a few days time not just yet western pacific though overall fairly quiet uh, this is the Indian Ocean and you can see things there um, quite spinny actually off the southwestern coast of India but certainly nothing that uh, I can see uh, likely to form 
I hope that is the right imagery that we've selected. And this is the South Pacific region, well you can see it there, and that quite clearly is the correct imagery because it's showing that new tropical cyclone that we've given tropical depression winds. Uh, there were some contaminated tropical storm readings on ASCAP as best we saw, um, so we've not pushed the button yet on uh, a tropical storm, and we'll wait to see what Fiji says. Sea surface temperatures in the eastern Pacific are bubbling and warming up 30 degrees quite comfortably along the coast of Mexico as you'd expect. The Atlantic, uh, the eddy there, the uh, loop current showing quite clearly um, the sea surface temperatures. Something went wrong with the map there. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, and let's take a look now towards the rest of the world. Ah, there is the Atlantic once again and there's the Indian Ocean. <laughs> What a glitch in the system that was. Uh, 30 degrees Celsius roughly uh, in many parts of the Indian Ocean and the uh, Arabian Sea off the coast of the Philippines as well, the uh, South China Sea. That's the hot spot at this time of year. Philippine Sea warming up and catching up uh, pretty quickly. Still decent temperatures all the way out towards the Mariana Islands, 28 degrees plus. So sea surface temperature is not a problem. Uh, down where that system is in the South Pacific, just taking a quick look there, around 28 to 30 degrees there as well, so not too bad. In fact, you'll see on the anomalies here that the waters are warmer than average where that system is developing, but the La Nina still quite clearly in effect there and not weakening, probably still strengthening at this point but certainly very visible across the southern Pacific. The Atlantic generally above average there as well. Here's the ocean heat content, and that's been building a little bit, especially uh, off the, uh, the western coast of Cuba. Uh, so homegrown development, something to watch out for. Eastern Pacific, there's a little red blob there. Western Pacific never struggles with ocean heat content. Eastern Pacific, though, is going to be struggling this year, as you, as you can see here from the get-go. Well, let's look at the models. First of all, nothingness in the Eastern Pacific, but I just thought I'd point out one or two little things that might try and get themselves going, little depression systems. As you see towards the end of this loop, you can see one of them starting to form and another one starting to, but really there's not much to see here. Uh, I just thought I would uh, put this up to trigger Ethan more than anything else, uh, because he is a big Eastern Pacific fan and he's going to be very disappointed this year. In the Western Pacific, we have uh, this potential development on the GFS. You can see that tropical storm moving up. Uh, another glitchy uh, video there, I'm not sure why, but you'll see it again here forming off the west coast of the Philippines uh, and then moving up past Taiwan and then off towards the northeast um, could become a tropical cyclone. Short-lived though. And here is the Southern Pacific, you can quite clearly see this new tropical cyclone crossing over the islands of Vanuatu as a mid-range tropical storm, then tapering off as it slowly winds its way towards New Caledonia and then gets sucked down to the south there uh, by a front eventually um, and will start a new life with tropical storm force winds over there. Uh, but impacts to land possible, uh, rain rates uh, could be quite significant we'll take a look at those in a moment as well um, and this is the South Atlantic you can see this cauldron of um, little cyclones but the main one of course is the one that's just on the Brazilian coast right now you saw it take a loop around there follow almost following the coast a little bit displaced out to sea and then swinging eastward swinging southeastward reaching a second peak intensity there which could reach hurricane strength and then off down towards the bottom right hand side of our screen all right precipitation amounts so this is taking a look at this cyclone moving through vanuatu getting into the oranges there towards the reds uh, overland there highest rain amounts we're probably looking at somewhere around um Oh gosh, I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, we're probably looking at somewhere around 10 inches uh, there at least. Uh, maybe a worst case scenario actually. We're probably looking more at 8 right now. And that's around 200, uh, 200 to 300 millimeters um, at a worst case scenario. And this is the South Atlantic. Much less rain amounts along the coast of Mexico, uh, <laughs> off the coast of Brazil, because it's not as um, tropical, not as much energy in it. Uh, but you'll see a little bit of yellow there, not far from Puerto Alegre, I believe. Uh, and that 
would denote maybe uh, three or four inches, maybe five inches of rainfall. So getting towards 100 to 150 millimeters. Looking into the longer range, the picture gets less clear, but the GFS is still showing signals for the Atlantic, uh, particularly the Western Caribbean. And towards the end of the 10 day period, starts uh, bringing up this very large tropical cyclone. There it is. Uh, but it makes a big fuss over trying to do it with lots of wind and rain over the Central uh, American um, region there over the next few days and then by day 10 it's formed. So whilst all the important stuff has been done, a good opportunity to tell you about our merch store where you can take a look at our latest merchandise and now we're taking requests for animations, wow. And here's Silly Range where we take a look at the Atlantic doing silly things. Um, lots of people very excited about this, uh, have been for quite some days about a potential hurricane in the late, in, uh, the late forecast period. GFS has been prolonging it and putting it back and putting it back and putting it back and that's probably going to keep going all the way until this system never forms. Um, there is that school of thought, but then there's also the other school of thought where um, we're supposed to be having a busy start to the season and maybe it could be the real deal towards the end of the month. It would be very anomalous though if it did happen. Western Pacific in the long range as well. Um, the GFS decides to form another tropical cyclone. There it is moving up between China and Taiwan. Very small thing. Um, I actually got a little bit confused between that one and the other one that we were talking about earlier uh, but could be potential for two tropical cyclones before the end of May in the Western Pacific but I wouldn't hold your breath on either of them to be quite honest and this is very long range. And in the Indian Ocean the GFS also wants another tropical cyclone. Um, one that forms at fairly high latitude doesn't give itself much room to develop and you can see it there swirling around in the uh, Ganges River Delta and over into West Bengal in the very long range. Will that happen? Will any of those long range things happen? My current answer for you is going to be no. But that won't stop me putting it in the Tropical Weather Bulletin just for a little bit of light entertainment. Well then, on this day we had three tropical cyclones active on May the 18th, 1990. That's 32 years ago now. Marion was a Category 2 and the strongest storm of them uh, in the South China Sea. Econjo was about to start weakening near the Seychelles. Um, another late season storm down there. And Alma was weakening after its, I think, hurricane peak in the Eastern Pacific. Very notable for how early that peak was in the season uh, down to a tropical depression at this stage low latitude as well was alma out in the eastern pacific so back to this year what's the naming lists well here they are the next name in the atlantic is alex in the eastern pacific the first name on the list is agatha and in the central pacific we are looking out for hone still in the Western Pacific, the next name now is Chaba. The North Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Citrang. Now, uh, earlier on, I put Dominic as the next name in the Australian region, but that has changed to Darian um, for some reason. So that's the next name on the list there, the Southwest Indian Ocean. Let Lama, if it has chance before the season shuts down. And in the South Pacific, the next name might be coming up soon, will be Gina.